Hello there friends, welcome to Glitch Tech X. How have you been? For all my returning viewers and subscribers, a big thank you for your love and support. And for all the new viewers and subscribers, welcome and thank you for checking out this video. Alright, so without further ado, we'll get started with today's shenanigans. Today we'll cover AMD Ryzen 9 5900X alleged benchmarks leaked. The Ryzen 7 5800X performed faster than the Intel Core i9-10900K in gaming. Ryzen 5000 series release schedule. Free performance gains for Zen 2 owners. Stick around to find out how. And a teeny tiny discussion about the RTX 30 series instability issues. Alrighty, let's begin. Talking about the recent instability issues reported by the RTX 30 series users and reviewers. Yeah, users. Only if you're lucky enough to get a card that is. Nvidia has made an official statement that they've been working closely with their board partners and the whole capacitor debacle is not indicative of quality. Various board manufacturers have also issued formal statements and almost all of them are backing their products and extending some kind of help to the consumers. Nvidia has also released a new driver version, the 456.55, and it seems to have helped the situation as users are now facing fewer issues. Well, glad that got sorted for the select few who got their hands on an RTX 3080 or 3090. Hooray! Alright, moving on. The Ryzen 7 5800X seem to have outperformed Intel's Core i9-10900K in gaming. As per the benchmarks executed in Ashes of the Singularity, the two CPUs were paired with an RTX 2080 GPU, and we clearly see that the Ryzen 7 5800X, shown at the top here, outperforms the Core i9-10900K. The 5800X is one of AMD's upcoming Zen 3 desktop CPUs, Keep watching the video for more on the release schedule of the Ryzen 5000 chips. The benchmark preset was crazy 4K and when it comes to 4K resolution, it is mostly GPU bound. But AOTS also shows the CPU frame rates and if we check those, there is a clear winner here. The Ryzen 7 5800X, which is an 8 core 16 thread CPU, outperforms the Core i9-10900K which is a 10-core 20-thread CPU. So the Intel chip has 125% more threads to work with, and despite that, the Ryzen 5800X completely crushes it and delivers up to 22% higher frame rate and 16% in average. This is huge. This is mind-numbing. Till date, everyone used to recommend an Intel processor for gaming, and that's where Ryzen couldn't overtake Intel. But now? how the turntables. I am really looking forward to see how Intel's lineup holds up against the Ryzen 5000 series. Now that we're on the topic of benchmarks, another benchmark has been released and this time it's of the Ryzen 9 5900X. Now I want to mention this straight off the bat that the authenticity of this leak is a bit questionable. However, as for the screenshot, the OPN does indicate that it's a Ryzen 5000 part the OPN codes were discussed at Ego's lab, and the OPN that we see over here in the CPU Z output matches the naming convention. And Ego's lab is a trusted entity, so this just might hold up. If this is the case, then this could be the first ever benchmark of the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a 12 core, 24 thread Zen 3 desktop CPU, and would replace the existing Ryzen 3900X. As per the benchmarks, the 5900X scored north of 652 points in single core tests, which is 27% faster than the Ryzen 7 3700X and around 25% faster than the Ryzen 9 3900X. This doesn't directly translate to IPC gains since the clock speeds of the test chip is unknown. So do take these benchmarks with a pinch of salt. In the multi-threaded test, the 5900X scored north of 9,481 points, which is a massive, massive improvement 
of 75% over the Ryzen 7 3700X and a 15% improvement over the 3900X. If these benchmarks and the data holds up, then I'd say I'm impressed, really impressed by the gen on gen performance gains of the Zen architecture. Ryzen used to be on the back foot in the gaming department, but now I think Intel is going to face stiff competition. And if priced right, then this could be a major blow for Intel. Moving on, there's news that the Zen 3 desktop uh, CPUs will be released on the 8th of October. This was covered in a previous news video. I'll link that in the description. Now, as the dust settles, it seems that the Ryzen 9 5900X and the Ryzen 7 5800X were mere CPUs could launch as early as the 20th of October. We just discussed about the CPUs and the performance that they deliver. So this is exciting. Details about a few Zen 3 SKUs have also surfaced. The Ryzen 9 5950X will be a flagship with 16 cores, 32 threads followed by the Ryzen 9 5900X, which will feature 12 cores, 24 threads. Then we have the Ryzen 7 5800X, which is an 8 core, 16 thread part. And finally, we have the Ryzen 5 5600X, which features 6 cores and 12 threads. If the pricing remains similar to what the present gen Ryzen had at launch, then it's going to be mega. It'll be a glorious day for PC builders, I tell ya. Zen 2 users, do not frown. You can get your hands on some free performance boost in the form of a utility called the Clock Tuner for Ryzen or CTR for short. This utility has been made by Wanasmas and is designed to increase the performance of the Zen 2 based processors, i.e., Ryzen 3000 and third gen Ryzen Threadripper, without increasing the power draw. All the credit goes to the creator, and I've been following this endeavor and it seems that Wanasmas has been working tirelessly to iron out the flaws and bugs and most recently beta version 3 was released. I'll link the way to download this tool in the description. There's a lot of magic that happens under the hood and CTR automatically undervolts each CCX and overclocks the said CCX. This in turn increases the performance while decreasing power draw. Yeah, magic. Well, all the props go to Wanasmas. Big shout out, mate. This is a sweet tool. Wanasmas also provided a couple of results, one with the Ryzen 9 3900X and the other with the 3960X Threadripper. The tuned 3900X gained 7% in performance while reducing power draw by 12.8 watts, and the Threadripper 3960X delivered 5.2% more performance with a reduction of 12 watts. With that said, I would want to point out overclocking, undervolting, overvolting, etc. comes with their own risk. So be careful, don't break your system. Well, that's it for today's video. If you watched it till the end, thank you so much for your time. Do consider subscribing to the channel for more videos. It'll be awesome if you did. Also click the thumbs up if you liked the video. Your support is valued and extremely helpful. Bye for now.